everyone, hey all, welcome to Monday, welcome to Countdown Day, and welcome to the channel. I, of course, am so glad that you are here. And as voted on by fans, this week we're going to be looking at the top 10 Legends slash Core Clash Transformers. That's our topic this time around in the latest Scott Bot Counts Down. Well, hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share. Of course, subscribe, and while you are at it, light him up, baby. Hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton and let you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links. All of that is in the description down below. Also in the description down below, and if you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we have to offer to you through spring, or of course, hit the join button at any given time and become a channel member. And this is the top 10. I've been asked to do this one for quite a while. This is the top 10 legend slash core class offerings it was from any line official third party it was all included here anything could have a vote as long as it was in that legend scale shockingly i thought that we were going to have more third party um votes that would come in because there's some excellent offerings from companies like new age magic square iron factory but a lot of people tended to stick with the official releases. Very, very interesting, if you ask me. Uh, we have our honorable mentions. Let's do those first. Uh, the first one to mention is the Core Class Optimus Prime that came with Roller and Trailer, as well as Bumblebee. It was like uh, a two-pack. Here in uh, Canada, it was in GameStop. I don't know where it was in the U.S. I want to say it was some sort of exclusive down there, too. Maybe Target or something. I, I, Walgreens? Amazon? I don't know. But it's that one. It's not just the Core Optimus that came out in Legacy. It's the Core Optimus with the whole package, with the trailer and the axe and the roller and the whole thing. Almost made the list. Uh, also, Core Class Sound Blaster, the black repaint with the purple chest that honestly I thought was probably even better than Sound Wave. I love black and purple though. Uh, we also had, as an honorable mention, Core Class Starscream. I suppose you could say any of the Core Class uh, Seeker molds from the Legacy line, Kingdom Legacy line, but Core Class uh, Starscream took it. 86 Wheelie is an honorable mention, and um, da, 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 Titans Return Nah, who almost made the list. So we have a couple there that almost made the list. Again, Sound Blaster, Starscream, Wheelie, Nah, and the Optimus Prime with the trailer. None of them actually made the list. So who did? You know what we're going to do. We're going to kick things off with number 10 first. Number 10 takes us back to Titan's Return and this guy. It's Braun. Now there was one vote for the Takara one which is colored more similar to the um, 86 where the green is a lighter green and um, the yellow I feel like is a little more orangey and I think it's up behind his head as well. Though this one does have the black and blue down on the lower pelvis that should be there. Um, and this one I've colored in the uh, windows blue on. So I, I admit that the, that the Takara has a better look, and I feel like it came with one of the uh, Headmasters, Titan Masters, if you will. Was it, mm, was it the head that came with, was it the head that came with um, Ramhorn? I don't remember now. I don't know what one came with it. Anyway, anyway, you want to cut it. Whether you're talking Titans Return or whether you're talking the Takara one, this little Legends lad stood as a um, brawl in um, bronze, sorry, in a lot of people's collections for a long time until the '86 came, and a lot of people then replaced it with that. But there are still some people who said, you know what, I'm just going to stick with the Legends class one because it's that good. The articulation is stupendous. It pretty much nails the look of the Transformer. You definitely know that this is Braun. And the transformation is very clever. And you can even accommodate a driver if you're so inclined. What's not to like about this guy? Enough fans feel that way that he took the number 10 slot. Coming in at number 9, we go back even further than Titan's Return. All the way to Generations. Though this character did have a reissue, sort of, in Titan's Return. I'm talking about... Generations Cosmos, specifically the Generations one, because a lot of people that voted for this Cosmos said the one that came with the little Micromaster Blaster thing. 
And that was this guy that came with Payload. And Payload is one of the Micromasters from the, I don't know, Air Patrol team or something. He turns into a little shuttle. Um, and can even attach to, to this guy. But if you want, it can also turn into Cosmos's Blaster. The Titan's Return version colored the entire arm in yellow, though I colored the lower arm in here myself. I painted it yellow. But the Titan's Return one colored the entire arm yellow. And it used a darker um, shade of green that was more animation accurate. Again, much like with Braun, this guy has since been updated with the Velocitron Speedia 500 Deluxe version. Some people got it, some people missed it, but here's the thing. If you're stuck with this version, or I suppose the Titan's Return one, this is still excellent. It's a convincing shuttle, tons of articulation, great looking bot who honestly looks like Cosmos has hit the gym a little bit. Like he's looking like he's beefed up and bulked up. This is excellent, the Titan's Return is excellent, or you know what, if you have this mold as Scrounge from the Computron set, it's also excellent there. Yeah, terrific example of how a wonderful Legends mold is done. Cosmos takes the number 9 slot. I think 8 might be the biggest shock on this list because it's Studio Series Bumblebee movie Ravage, and a lot of people Skip this guy. I mean, so much so that this guy here in Canada is still on pegs at some stores, and he and Shockwave actually got clearanced, I'm going to say clearanced, um, bought up, Overstock was bought up, I guess, by Dollarama, and I actually got this guy for $4, as I recall. Four bucks. Like, how can you go wrong? Might have been six bucks. Um, but it became a real steal of a deal. Why? Because, in essence, he doesn't transform into anything. He turns into a cube that fits in the studio series Soundwave's chest. A lot of people said, it's not a cassette, it's not a nothing, it's not a tank, it's not a nothing. However, those that voted for him said, look, he does scale perfectly with that sound wave. He does fit in that sound wave's chest. He can eject. He looks like the glob of a block that he was in the Bumblebee movie. But here's the reason I really voted for him. Because he is the best articulated um, mainline version of Ravage that we've ever gotten. I don't know about that. I think the classics is pretty excellent. And I also really like um, the device label one. That one is well articulated. But I'll give credit where credit is due. Yeah, we have ball uh, jointed shoulders, though they don't go out super far. We do have like a knee and an ankle on the guy. On the back, same sort of thing. He even puts his blasters on his hips. The tail moves up and down. The head moves up and down. The jaw opens Opens and closes? Yeah, the jaw opens and closes. I mean, it'd be nice, I guess, if the head could go left and right, but man, what a minor, a minor gripe. I get it. It's an unexpected addition. I didn't think so many people like this guy since he's been such a shelf warmer, but some people even said, hey, I don't have that sound wave, I don't want that sound wave, but he stands as my Ravage of choice. Who might argue with the voters? This guy, this Ravage, took the number eight slot. And number seven takes us to this guy. It is the Combiner Wars version of Shockwave. And I'm a bit surprised. I would have figured that the Legacy version would probably take the votes. But it didn't. A lot of fans said, look, this guy had a great look. He had excellent articulation. And he had a pretty great alt mode that could function as like a ship by itself, but also served as a blaster for Combiner Wars Bruticus. Now here's the thing. I don't actually know the shockwave because the robot was at a scale that didn't appeal to me. I'm surprised that more people didn't complain about the use of clear plastic on him in a couple of spots, namely the lower legs, but people have said they've never had any issue with him. No cracking, no poor tolerances, nothing. Um, and frankly, I don't remember Bruticus using shockwave. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure he did. I don't need a million comments saying, yeah, he did in such and such an episode. Just because I don't remember doesn't mean it didn't happen. And I'm sure that it did. And it was that like one time in that episode thing, right? And I mean, I don't know, it was probably like a couple of those that were near the end of season two, I think it was right? Just before we went into the movie and stuff. So, like, I get it. I understand um, where he probably used Shockwave. I just don't recall it right now. I don't know the mold. I can only relay what voters said to me, and enough voters said that it was a great transformation, it was great articulation, a great look, and could serve as a blaster for Bruticus. Why not love this guy? And enough fans do that Combiner War Shockwave was able to take the number seven slot. Number six takes us back once again to what I consider to be one of the golden eras of Transformers when we got some of the best product that we ever got by way of Titan's Return and this guy. 
Titan's Return Sea Spray came out in the same wave, actually, ironically enough, as the earlier discussed Cosmos. Um, and you know what? The transformation here is really fun, really smooth. They give us a really fun hovercraft, which is something that we... It's an alt mode that we just plain don't get as often as maybe we should. But then when we do the transformation to robot mode, you can have him still looking kind of tubby like we know the guy to look. Or this can come off and it becomes his pizza, pizza box blaster, as we all know, right? It just comes off and it'll fit. Ooh. It'll fit by way of a little rectangular slot kind of above the wrist, but it looks like he's holding the pizza box. It's supposed to be his blaster. And if you want, like, even underneath, we still have an Autobot logo. It's painted. He doesn't look tubby now, but, like, man, if you're like, I don't want that in his hand, the storage is impeccable for it. You can look all the way around this guy, and there's not really any hollowness. I mean, I suppose I'll... No! I don't see any hollowness on this guy at all. He can still accommodate a Titan Master. The head is nice and painted. The yellow, though it isn't the perfect match to the yellow plastic, is still kind of nice. The propellers actually work on the guy. The arms, they go out nice and far and a nice elbow and the, the swivel. About the only limit, I suppose, is no waist? I don't think he has a waist. Does he have a waist? No, and I didn't think he did. About the only limit is no waist, and maybe it'd be nice if his hips could go out a little further. But man, the mass is here. The look is here. It looks like the guy jumped off the screen. He's easy to articulate. Um, even his knee gives us a nice 90 degree that way, or a nice 90 degree this way if you want to break his leg, so to speak. Nice, dedicated uh, thigh swivel. Like, man, oh man, great look, great transformation, great articulation. What's not to like about Sea Spray? And enough fans feel the same way that Sea Spray took the number six slot. And now, yes, indeed, a hush has fallen over the crowd because we have reached the ever coveted, ever popular halfway mark and at the halfway mark we have a mold that frankly i kind of don't really know though i can still sort of speak to it because it's this guy studio series 86 rumble now i don't know the mold i've never seen it in store i certainly didn't pre-order it because personally for my collection i have the titans return um, version of him and my son has this version which came in the four pack and I didn't feel like that there was enough different with the core class one that I felt motivated to have to pick it up now let's talk about a couple of things with it though first things first the one in the picture the 86 is definitely colored more accurately than this guy or the Titans Return undoubtedly the 86 is the most accurate to the cartoon Secondly, that one comes with the pile drivers. While I can mimic that with the Titans Return, this guy did not come with the pile drivers. Thirdly, the lower legs of that one have really been altered quite a bit, so that now there's even flip out toes that this one doesn't have, that one does. Um, and while I don't think it really changes the articulation, I think it improves on the proportions, because this guy does look a little stumpy dumpy to me. Um, this one's fine, the Titans Return is fine, but fans absolutely adore the core class offering that is Studio Series 86 Rumble. A couple of votes also came in for Frenzy, by the way, but there were only a couple for Frenzy, there were a ton for Rumble. It is what it is. What do you want? Yeah, jumped off the screen, plus he even has his shoulder cannons. What's not to love about Studio Series 86 Rumble? Enough fans feel that way that he took the number five slot. Number four may be the second most unexpected addition to this list after the Bumblebee movie Ravage. And it's this guy. It is Legacy Iguanus. Now, some people have really complained and said, they should have done their own shell and made the inner robot, or they should have done them all as deluxe, or blah, 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 blah. Look, Iguanus is a very fringe pretender. Pretenders are fringe characters anyway. Iguanus is amongst the most fringe because he wasn't in uh, like, a, you know, a cartoon or whatever. So getting him as a core class that's a melange, if you will, of his inner robots alt mode, but his um, outer shell, I think worked really well. Tons of paint on this guy from this bronzy gold to the red. He comes with an accessory being a blaster to the paint back here on his windshield. I think that the head even has some purple paint on it. Um, yeah. To the articulation, we have everything from, you know, a waist to ankle tilt to a bicep out to the side. Everything that you could possibly really want. Even the head has a little up and down and to the side. 
Splendid articulation, splendid paint, and guess what? A really involved transformation for a Legends class, a mainline Legends cl class at that, that gives us a really rewarding motorcycle mode that's capable of standing up on its own because of these nice, chunky wheels, which, by the way, I'm pretty sure are painted to be this pinky red color. I mean, even the tires are painted. Come on. Yeah, splendid transformation, impeccable articulation that makes for, like, a solid stance, and tons of paint. You know what? It makes sense. Unexpected, but all the pieces, parts are here, including a respectable mass for the guy. What's not to like? Yeah, Iguanas takes the number four slot. As we get ever closer to the tippy top, I can tell you that number three and number two were separated by one vote. One vote for number three and number two. Number three is Combiner Wars and Power Glide. There were a couple of votes, by the way, for Viper as well. But I love this mold. Now, uh, don't get me wrong. Some people have complained about it over the years and said, when you go to plane mode, the legs don't stay tabbed together. Mine stay together okay, but I know it was a common issue. Some other people have said, this guy didn't have bicep swivel. That's a bummer. And you know what? You're right. He didn't, though luckily you can get most of what you want because of the shoulder ball joint, right? So... Granted, he can't put his arm across his body. That's a bit of a bummer. Does he have a waist? I don't remember if he has a waist. I don't think he does. Nah, he doesn't have a waist. However, he definitely looks like Power Glide. Is he one that might be ripe for an update? Possibly. But the scale here is right. He is a mini bot. He should be small. The look is right. The paint is great. The transformation is fun. Even if some people did have a couple of uh, uh, tabbing issues with the legs. I mean, my legs. Yeah, like, my legs are staying tabbed together just fine. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I understand the gripes. I'm just glad I didn't have to have them myself. But I think most people that voted for this guy did it because, I mean, look at him. Look at him. Just, I mean, just look at him. He looks like Power Glide. Absolutely like Power Glide. Not stylized. Not at a scale. Not the wrong color. Not an adaptation. It looks like Power Glide. And for that reason, he takes the number three slot. Number two is a character that was recently updated, and guess what? The update is pretty splendid, but so is the original Power of the Primes, Beachcomber. Yeah, um, this is still excellent. Now, I added an Autobot logo here because he didn't have that detail, though there is a lot of gray paint and stuff on his chest. Um, his hands were gray. I painted them blue, but if you left them gray, cool. He has the tampographed Autobot uh, symbol on his legs. It's arguable if that should be there. I feel like this guy is a little more um, toy accurate than animation accurate. But, man oh man, he really stood for a long time as my beachcomber. And guess what? Though I have the legacy, I still see the charm of this guy. I know a lot of people who said that they were going to skip the legacy because this guy was still the right scale and he still looked stu uh, stupendous. I mean, his four wheels, they were all pinned, uh, sorry, the top two were pinned, the bottom ones weren't, but they were all painted with silver in around. He has really great articulation. The only thing the legacy improves on is that they give him an ankle tilt, and I'm pretty sure the legacy gives him a waist. Otherwise, this is clean, this is solid, I mean, very little hollowness. Even in here, in the inner arm, there's some molded details, so like, I don't know what to say, man. Excellent transformation that's a ton of fun in Doom Buggy mode. And pretty solid, holds together well and can hold a Titan Master. Effective articulation for the most part. Great look, great bot. Power of the Primes, Beachcomber took the number two slot. And now here we are at the very tippy top number one. And number one far and away blew every other Legends core class offering out of the water with the votes. It took the lead in a stranglehold and never ever let up. I reviewed this one myself and it's this guy. That's right, it is the Kingdom Legacy core class sound wave. And people said, look, in cassette mode, it makes a generally scale-accurate cassette player. He comes with a, a little laser beak, granted that doesn't transform, but the chest still opens and the laser beak can go in there. He feels great, excellent articulation, an intuitive yet enjoyable transformation, perfect color scheme and look. I mean, even when I see it, I'm like, man, is that... Uh, a repaint of the Voyager, and then I realized, no, that's the core, because it looks just that good. The only gripe that really I could levy against it would be that the small robot isn't to scale, 
which is something that bothers me, but obviously doesn't bother the voters. And uh, I wish that his head had, uh, on the back had been filled in. But what a minor gripe for something that is so otherwise spectacular fantastic. You want to know how to do a terrific Legends class, core class offering? Look no further than Soundwave as he took easily the number one slot. And that's it, man. Ten down to one. Once again, other ones that had votes uh, include Studio Series 86 Spike. Noah Diaz had some votes. I love the Noah Diaz. He's great. Um, RTS Megatron. That was an interesting one to put in there, but that was a clever transformation. A little bit limited articulation, but a clever transformation. RTS Wind Charger, which I think is a scout class, so it was a bit iffy, but man, what a great scout class. I got him over there. I actually use him as one of my Omnibots, to be honest with you. Um, Legend Cybertron Starscream. Don't know them old. Um, Chop Shop. That was a good one. Um, Dark of the Moon Starscream. Uh, RTS Optimus Prime, I actually re reviewed that mold a little while ago. I think I reviewed the Chronicles version of it. Um, Legacy Shockwave, Dark of the Moon, Power Glide. Um, Prime, Commander Class, not big Commander Class, back when it was Cyberverse Commander Class, and that was basically Legends Class. Hard Shell and Dreadwing. Um, Classics Optimus Prime, don't really know that one offhand. Rung, uh, Generations Gears. Dr. Wu's Optimus Prime. Yes, Dr. Wu's Mohawk. That's Mozart. Uh, Studio Series Mozart. Um, Studio Series Mohawk. Um, Dr. Wu's RC. Bomb Burst. The, I guess, Legacy. Legacy Evolution Bomb Burst. Um, Prime Hardshell, if I didn't already say him, though I think I did. Uh, gosh, who else had votes here? The new uh, Legacy United Energon Megatron, uh, Dinobot Slash from Power of the Primes, Power of the Primes Tailgate, um, Viper I already mentioned, the Core Class Rat Trap, Legacy, uh, Kingdom Legacy Hot Rod, um, Universe Cosmos, he doesn't have elbows though, uh, and the guy who voted for him said he turns into like a doorbell, which I kind of see. Um, Boulder Crash, who is actually shockingly fun. Titans Return Wheelie, 86 Wheelie, uh, Swerve. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Who else do we have here? Tasmania Kid. Um, Combined Wars Blackjack. The Combined Mode of Core Class Volcanicus, as well as the Titans Return Battle Trap. Honestly, I think both Battle Slash and um, Road Trap, I think it was. Honestly, I think that they are both pretty great and pretty fun. Together as Battle Trap, I'm pretty happy with them, though that makes them sort of deluxe class. And, um, Power of the Primes Wind Charger. There you go, them and even more. Man, oh man, so many great companies, official and third party. So many great lines, so many great legends slash core class offerings over the years. Let me know your favorites and if they appeared on the list, I appreciate you guys coming by, giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link, check us out on Patreon, see what we have to offer to you through spring, or of course hit the join button at any given time and become a channel member while you're at it. Please hit the subscribe button, stick around, have some fun with us here on the channel. And don't forget that somehow, some way, each and every single solitary day, you right there, you do make a difference in the world. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way, right here inside the videos.